Hi everyone, my name is Rohit Deb. Uh, just to give you an introduction about myself, I graduated from the National Law School of India University, Bangalore in 2009. I secured the 11th position in the NLSIU entrance exam and I have taught legal reasoning at Career Launcher. Now if that's enough, let's move ahead with the bulk of the course. All right, let's first talk about the legal profession and how to get into one of the top law colleges because if you're appearing for CLAT, that is what you should be aiming for. First and foremost, the law, law is one of the oldest uh, professions in the world. Uh, it's been practiced ever since there was a need for human beings to live together because the moment human beings live together, there would have been conflicts, there would have been necessity to organize how we live together, hence the need for laws, okay? Uh, even today, we deal with laws at practically every stage of our lives. If you go and buy something from the shop, you're entering into a contract that's governed by the Contracts Act. If you're setting up a company, then it's governed by the Companies Act. If you're driving down the road, then there's a traffic, uh, and then there's a law that governs uh, how traffic is supposed to move and whether or not you're supposed to wear your seatbelt or your helmet and uh, how you're supposed to move your vehicles, etc. So law deals with every aspect of our lives, okay? Now, at the basic level, we have the constitution, which is the basic law of the, of the land, which guarantees our fundamental rights and lays down the framework of how the laws of the country should work, okay? Now, as for a choice of career in law, there are many choices of career in law. First and foremost, as a practicing lawyer, you can choose to uh, work in very specific fields. Like you can choose to work, be a criminal lawyer. You can choose to be a tax advocate. You can choose to uh, work for uh, as appearing before the high courts and the Supreme Court. You can uh, choose a variety of, uh, you can be an intellectual property lawyer. So there's a variety of choices even as a practicing lawyer. But even aside from a practicing lawyer, you can be a mediator. You can be a researcher, you can be a consultant, you can work as part of a government think tank. So there are a lot of options for you in the practice of law as a career choice, uh, if you should choose to make it. Um, now the legal profession has expanded rapidly over the past few years. That's also because the, the pace of change in our lives has become much faster. Technology is changing much faster. The internet uh, has uh, changed a lot of things in terms of how we interact in terms of how we share information about ourselves, in terms of how we uh, deal with each other. So contracts are entered, for instance, exclusively over the internet uh, or between people who are located in different countries. Okay, money exchange hands. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, things that have changed because of technology. Okay, now, so thus there are diverse areas in which you can practice that can be very niche areas and that can turn out to be very profitable. One example of this is intellectual property laws. For instance, movies are made in Hollywood, in the US. Okay, they're shot in different places. They're made in Hollywood, finally, and they're distributed across the world. And uh, people can pirate those movies somewhere else. So people look to uh, enforce intellectual property laws uh, across jurisdictions. So uh, basically, it's a very niche area of law, but it can be very profitable for someone who's practicing it. Uh, thus, the legal profession is constantly evolving and changing along with changes in our day-to-day -day lives, along with changes in the world in which we're living in, okay? Thus, with the advent of new technologies and new fields coming up, the new areas of law also come up and uh, new challenges come up in how uh, they deal with these changes, okay? In the globalized scenario, changes anywhere in the world are likely to have an impact on the practice of law in India. Okay, that's because if something, uh, say for instance, uh, the idea of social security was mooted earlier on in the West, but then the current government has with the Aadhaar Act uh, brought about a massive amount of changes in terms of uh, social security and in very simply in terms of how Aadhaar is sought to be implemented in India. Now, in terms of that, we are discussing how social security has been implemented in other places and uh, whether or not what sort of lessons we should take from that in terms of implementing Aadhaar Act in India, etc. So now, especially in, chain, in the field of technology, in, in areas where technology touches upon, 
there are advances almost every day that the law has to keep up with. Okay, so the law is an ever-evolving field. It's an ever-changing field. It is said that the only constant with regard to the law is that it is always changing. Okay. Now, uh, so basically to practice the law, you basically have to be able to keep up with the changes in the law. Now, what makes for a good lawyer? Certain things are, well, they, they are unchanging, such as good communication skills, excellent memory and ability to think logically. These are the basis of what make you a good lawyer. Okay. You have to be a good listener. You have to be a powerful orator. You have to be good at accepting ideas. You have to be good at getting your ideas across. Okay, because uh, debating is a good skill uh, that you need to have as a lawyer. Okay, you have to be fair, you have to be open-minded and flexible in terms of ideas. Okay, you have to have to, uh, again, uh, that's in terms of uh, dealing with other people, with other lawyers, with judges. Okay, but at the same time, in dealing with your clients, you need to be able to come across as sympathetic and genuine. Okay, that is to say your clients must feel free to open up to you and to deal with uh, you as a, as someone who's helping them out. Okay. And uh, you basically also need to have the ability to think outside the box. Now, what that means, you must have heard of this expression, out of the box thinking. Now, what that basically means is not to only look at solutions that are being implemented as of now, but also to think outside of this, the set of ideas that are looked at right now and to be able to come up with solutions that are not looked at as solutions right now, but in the future, they could very well be, become the norm. Okay. Now, why your law school matters is that a good law school will train you to develop the abilities you need to become a good lawyer. Okay. It will basically give you a background. It will give you the platform in which you practice all of the skills that you need in order to become a good lawyer. Okay. You will be exposed to a variety of new ideas. Okay, you will be exposed to a variety of new kinds of people. Okay, you will uh, you will usually have a large library that you will be referring to, where you will come across ideas from different countries, from different ages, from different groups of people. Okay, and how these ideas can be used to uh, change your way of thinking, your way of dealing with the world, your way of seeing the world. Okay, you will be taught about the complexities in society because society has different levels of people as different groups of people all coming together and working together. So you will be taught about the complexities in society and how to deal with uh, the complexities in society. And you will be given the right kind of exposure. Also, once you are part of a certain law school, you are part of that certain group of people who will in the future, once you pass out, these will be the people who, who you will hit ideas off of and who will come to you with their problems. You will go to them with your problems. They will be able to help you out. You will help them out. Uh, so it will also give you a peer group with which uh, to uh, go into the future. Okay. Now the law entrance test. CLAT, the common law admission test is held in May every year. You have the opportunity to enter into the top 19 law schools in India. The CLAT is held by all of the law schools coming together. Now in the paper, there are 200 multiple choice questions that you are given two hours to solve. Okay. And there are five basic sections, English, math, GK, logical reasoning and legal reasoning. Okay. Now we'll go into a bit more detail as to what the CLAT paper is all about and what you need to do to approach the CLAT, uh, the common law entrance, the common law admission test. Okay. Okay. Now coming to the CLAT paper and what to expect from it. First and foremost, the common law admission test. Let's go into a bit of the background for the common law admission test and why it was set up. Okay. Now the model for the national law schools was developed with the setting up of the, of NLSIU Bangalore, uh, in 1987. That is to say, basically the model of having a professional law course was mooted for the, uh, was mooted for the, by the Bar Council of India. And uh, it was done with, the, uh, and the NLSIU was set up with that in mind. Okay, earlier it was a requirement to have a graduate degree before one could acquire a degree in law. That is, you need to be needed to be a BA before you could have an LLB or a BSc before you could have an LLB. This was seen as having a detrimental effect on the quality of students approaching the legal profession. 
because often this was not seen as a professional course. Okay, the same way that engineering or medicine was seen as a professional course, law was not seen as a professional course. Okay, so the Bar Council of India and the Supreme Court wanted to establish law as a professional career. Okay, as a result of which the integrated BA LLB course was pioneered at NLSIU, which sought to create a course that students graduated from graduating from school could directly attend. Okay, so it's a combined BA LLB. It's a double graduation program that you are entering. Okay, and uh, other law schools like the NUJS West Bengal that provides a BSc LLB as well. Okay, so these are basically combined uh, law degrees. Okay, where you are getting two uh, graduations for the price of one, so to speak. Okay, now initially NLSIU used to have its own admission test held and held in the pencil paper format at various centers across the country. Subsequently, other law schools came up, such as Nalsar, West Bengal NUJS, NLIU Bhopal, NLU Jodhpur, etc. These were also established on the NLSIU model, but they had their own admission tests separately. As a result, an aspiring law student would have to pay separate exam fees and have to appear for several dif different tests on several different dates. Okay. Ultimately, the matter was subject to a PIL, it's a public interest litigation before the Supreme Court. And the top law colleges in India were directed to come together and hold a common law admission test or CLAT. Okay, so the first CLAT exam was conducted in 2008 by NLSIU Bangalore. Okay, now the CLAT ex exam, the CLAT test is conducted by 19 participating law schools in rotation. That is to say, every year one of the 19 particip participating law schools uh, sets up the paper. Okay, and basically all of them administer the paper together. Okay, uh, 43 other educational institutes and two public uh, sector institutes are also eligible to use CLAT scores to decide eligibility for admission. So once you give the CLAT exam, it's not only the 19 law schools that you're appearing for, but there are also other educational institutions that use the CLAT score in order to decide admission. Okay, now the test is common, but different law schools decide different cutoffs that uh, the aspirant that you will have to uh, satisfy in order to qualify for their uh, entrance for the, their entrance criteria okay till 2011 students were asked to indicate the preference of institutions in the in the admission form itself since 2011 applicants have been asked to select their choice of institutions after the declaration of results that is to say the uh, institutions themselves pretty much provide the cutoffs and then you are required to uh, give your preference for what law school you want to enter. The uh, CLAT paper comprises of 200 questions with four possible answers, that is multiple choice questions, out of which the candidate has, has to select the correct answer. All questions are of the objective type with no subjective or essay type answers required. Okay, Each correct answer is awarded one, one mark and for each incorrect answer, 2.5 marks, that's one quarter marks are deducted. No marks are deducted for questions which are left unattempted. The duration of the CLAT exam is two hours. The paper is divided into five sections, although only the total score is consider considered and sectional uh, cutoffs are not given. Okay, so the cutoff is only for the entire paper taken as a whole. Okay, now the paper is divided into the following sections, English, general knowledge and current affairs, elementary mathematics, legal aptitude and logical reasoning. Now, since the exam is geared towards students graduating from school, the level of English questions are uh, the same as class 12 and the level of maths questions are the same as class 10. Okay, so you don't have to get worked up too much about the English and math sections. They are more or less uh, pretty simple. Okay, the English section comprises of reading comprehension and grammar, vocabulary, fill in the blanks, correcting sentences and such questions. Okay, the general knowledge and current affairs questions are basically either static general knowledge, that is things like the date when, uh, okay, like the date when India gained independence or the height of the, of Mount Everest, okay? These are static general knowledge questions, or you can have what is called current affairs and recent topics, usually from the past one year of uh, events of topics that have been in the news, okay? Then we come to the mathematics section. The mathematics section basically deals with the number system, percentage, profit and loss, time and work, height and distance, 
geometry, algebra, trigonometry, etc. Okay, legal aptitude tests. Uh, basically, this is a unique uh, part of the exam because this basically what they do is you won't find this in other common uh, entrance tests. Uh, here, basically, you will be given a legal proposition and a hypothetical factual situation and possible uh, answers and you will have to test the given legal proposition against the hypothetical factual situation and choose which of the right answers you have to pick, which of the answers you have to pick, okay? And uh, finally, the logical reasoning section deals with syllogism, uh, logical sequences, analogies, blood relations, etc. Okay, and now in slightly more detail, the English section needs to focus uh, in dealing with the English section, you need to focus on English based comprehension passages and grammar. In the comprehension section, you will be questioned on understanding the on, on the understanding of a passage, including its central theme and word meanings. Some of the questions will also cover correction of grammatically incorrect sen sentences, fill in the blanks with appropriate words, etc. General knowledge and current affairs will test, like I mentioned, static GK. Apart from static GK, questions will also cover recent topics uh, and current affairs broadly featuring the events for this year, say for instance, between March 2008 and April 2009. That's for this year as in those appearing for the uh, exam in May 2009. Okay. Numerical ability will generally test the numerical ability of the type up to class 10th standard. Okay. Legal aptitude. The section will test your interest toward the study of law. Okay. Aptitude for research and problem solving ability. The questions will be framed on the legal propositions and set of facts satisfying those legal propositions. Okay. The propositions may or may not be true in a real sense. Okay. Because sometimes you might be given very hypothetical uh, propositions which may not be true at all in the legal in the real sense as in someone might commit a hurt on someone else and still uh, according to the proposition given in the sentence in the question they might not be held guilty okay so you will have to assume the true the true proposition based on the given set of facts and answer the questions accordingly okay now, logical reasoning, these, uh, the questions of this section will uh, test your ability to identify patterns, logical links, and rectify illogical arguments. The section will also cover a variety of logical aptitude questions, including syllogism, logical sequences, analogies, etc. However, the logical reasoning section will not have vis visual reasoning uh, questions. Okay, that is to say, they will not give you four set, five sets of uh, images and ask you which one does not fit in the sequence, etc. So those kind of logical reason questions will not be there. Okay. Now looking at the subject wise distribution of marks, because this is how you will allot the, how you will, the weightage basically of how much weightage you need to give to each of these uh, sections. Okay. Now elementary math, that's the mathematics section only contains 20 questions out of 200 questions. Okay. So it is the lowest um, weightage in terms of sections. Okay, English and logical reasoning both contain 40 questions each. Okay, so these are next in terms of weightage. Okay, and general knowledge, current affairs and legal aptitude contain 50 questions each. So these are basically the highest weighted in terms of, uh, and basically your best chance of getting through to the best law schools in the country. Okay. Now, as mentioned before, these are multiple choice questions. Each correct que answer will be given one mark for every incorrect response. Your 2.5 marks, oh, sorry, 0.25 marks will be deducted. Okay, that is to say one quarter mark will be deducted for every wrong answer. And uh, non-attempted questions will be awarded zero marks. That is no deductions for answers that you don't, for questions that you don't attempt. Okay, now the CLAT cutoffs as in 2017 were for National Law School of India University, Bangalore, there was 59, okay, that is only the top 59 students were uh, given admission into NLSIU Bangalore. For NALSAR, it was 130. For NUJS Kolkata, it was 213. For NLU Jodhpur, it was 343. For NLIU Bhopal, it was 351 and so on and so forth. So as such, when you are aiming for a good CLAT result, you are looking to, you're looking to basically get within the top 400, okay, uh, 
uh, out of all of the people who are giving the exam, you're basically looking to get within the top 400 because that's where all the best law schools are. Okay. Now, CLAT resources, these are some uh, resources that you can uh, look to for uh, basically for good practice, for good, uh, I mean, the key finally to doing well in your CLAT paper is practice, practice, practice. And these are some resources, some books, which will uh, help give, will give you the kind of questions that you need to do in order to be able to practice well. Okay, there are some more uh, over here. Okay, so make a note of these. Uh, okay, and also just uh, the bottom half of this page for the GK section, Competition Success Review or Pratyogyata Darpan, GK Today, Manorama Yearbook, India Yearbook. Okay, all of these are good uh, reference uh, books for uh, GK. Okay, they usually come out over the year end. Okay, but uh, keep uh, referring these and also read uh, a good, uh, read a newspaper like the Hindu or the Indian Express. Okay, and keep referring uh, online sources for international news like the BBC. Okay, uh, these will be, these are good pointers to prepare for your CLAT paper. Okay, uh, also these are some web resources you can refer to for uh, uh, for preparing for the CLAT. So these are some CLAT resources that I've managed to put together. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically we've taken a look at what the what to expect in the CLAT paper itself. Okay, and what the legal profession is all about. Next up, we'll uh, take a brief look at uh, how to prepare for GK because again, it's basically very, I mean, you have to prepare yourself for GK. There's really no one who can sit and teach you GK. Okay, so uh, we'll basically look at how to deal with GK and then we'll dive into uh, the, the meaty part of this paper, which is of the CLAT paper, which is legal reasoning. Okay, and basically the rest of the series of this, these videos will basically deal with uh, with uh, legal reasoning. Okay, so hope you found that useful. Uh, join us for the next video. All right, goodbye.